Uh, I'm coming to you from beautiful Ha Long Bay in North Vietnam to talk to you a little bit about communication channels. Um, I want to bring up the idea of a communication channel because I want to put the rest of the things that we do in this course into a certain context. And the context is that we all communicate. You'll hear this in different ways in other parts of the class. In this, in this segment, I want to talk to you about the idea of a communication channel, that we invent different ways of performing what we've been doing since the beginning of time, which is speaking to each other, telling each other stories, telling each other the news, making each other laugh, making each other cry. That's what we do as human beings. And throughout time, we've invented different channels for doing that. So the first channel, and the natural channel, the one that we began with, is the face-to-face -face channel, right? Speaking to each other through sound waves. I listen, you, he you hear, excuse me, I speak, you hear, you speak, I hear, etc. The next way that came along, the next big way that came along anyway, was written communication, where we took the speech sounds that we made, face-to-face -face sounds, and put them down. First we put them on clay tablets and stones and monuments and buildings and finally we put them on more ephemeral, ephemeral media like parchment and paper. Um, and now today we take those same conversations, the same root conversations, the same things we've been wanting to do for all time, and we put them inside of computers, even more ephemeral. Turn off the power and the entire written communication is gone. So communication channels. First one face-to-face, -face, second one written. The next one that came along was, I would like to call it the voice-to-voice, -voice, V to V. We had telegraphs, uh, basically allowing you to speak to someone at a distance, and telephones allowing you to speak to someone at a distance. The interesting thing about those was it was instantaneous over long distances. Written communication would happen over long distances, but it would not happen instantaneously. A letter would take a long time to get from place to place. But when we had instantaneous communication, we all of a sudden had the ability to talk directly and immediately to people anywhere we wanted to in the world, of course, given that the wires went there. So that was the V to V or voice to voice channel. Notice each of these is a channel. And now as we get into these other channels, not the face to face channel, but the written, the voice to voice and next the broadcast channel, um, we see that they're technologically mediated. They're no longer, you need something, you need to build something in order to make it happen. The, the voice to voice channel uses, ele uses electromagnetic waves. The next one along, the broadcast channel where we're able to, um, uh, to speak one person to many people over radio, over television, over movies, over uh, videos, whatever, um, was a channel also mediated by electromagnetic waves through the air, through wires, um, that allowed us to speak at a distance and speak to large groups of people. The voice-to-voice -voice channel really is a person-to-person -person kind of communication channel. The broadcast channel is a one person or a small group of people to the many channels. So each of these new channels, each of these new technologies came along and had certain what we like to call affordances. Things that it allowed you to do, things that it didn't allow you to do. The, um, the, the telegraph channel, for example, allowed you to pass small messages. A little bit like instant messaging. When you think of telegraphs, really think of instant messaging where you have a very short communication and you communicate to directly to one other person, then they, they form a short communication and talk directly to you. That's the voice-to-voice that's the, uh, the voice -voice channel. In the broadcast channel, um, it's not short messages. In the broadcast channel, it's long messages. It's whole stories, radio shows, which would be dramas, ongoing series, ongoing, uh, ongoing uh, episodes of, a, of an ongoing um, uh, interaction between people, very long-term, very rich, very nuanced, as opposed to the telegraph, which was short staccato messages, right? Bop, 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 bop. Okay, next, after the broadcast channel, we talked about the face-to-face -face channel. That's just face-to-face -face communication. The written channel, which is where we wrote down the face-to-face -face communication in, in either longer, longer lasting or shorter lasting forms. The voice-to-voice -voice channel, person-to-person. -person. And the broadcast channel, where it's one to many people. The final channel, the online channel, the channel that we're most concerned with in this class, is the channel that we've most recently invented to do what? The same things as the voice-to-voice, -voice, the broadcast, all those other channels do. Tell stories, pass the news around, make each other laugh, make each other cry, all the things that human beings do no matter where they go. Um, the, the online channel, I'll take it and break it down a little bit more and go a little bit more into detail, and in fact, the, this entire course really is about that online channel. The idea here is that the online channel is a channel just like any other channel. And if you understand this idea that human beings have been communicating since time began 
and every so often they come up with new technologies to help them communicate more and better and that each of those technologies has certain deficiencies each of those technologies has certain strengths then you'll really be able to see everything that we do in this class in the in the right perspective